So, of course, immediately you can take your boards as you finish your residency and... Uh, yeah. No, that's another step. And um, coming out of training, obviously, and, and uh, the board wants to see how you're doing, um, uh, what type of practice, um, and what's your success rate, and have you had any complications. So they keep a close eye on you for about two or three years. And most physicians have to keep a very um, careful log of their cases. And then you sit for what's called an oral boards. And, uh, and that usually takes another two to three years. So uh, yeah, it is another two to three years before you become what's considered a board certified neurosurgeon. So my friends at Foothill Technology High School, if you want to be a neurosurgeon, keep that in mind. Uh, and what, what kept you on track uh, as a, what, what, what would, was there an initial fascination when you were a child or? You know, I actually um, didn't really focus in on neurosurgery until I was in medical school. I um, trained uh, at uh, Northwestern University in Chicago and the person that interested me in it was uh, a pediatric neurosurgeon. Uh, his name is um, David McClone. And, um, I did some research with him as a medical student uh, during my summers, and he really sucked me into the interest of it. And uh, I, I always liked neurology, but I did like the concept of getting in there and having my hands on as far as treatments and um, cures for things. So that's where my focus went. But I always knew I wanted to be a physician, uh, when, even when I was in high school, but it was really later that I focused on neurosurgery. And then fine motor skills. I imagine you don't uh, play with chainsaws at home much. No, uh, not no. anymore. Uh, my family won't let me anymore. They keep, um, anytime I pull out any power tools, I get yeah. in trouble. Yeah. I think that goes for most men. It's, uh, uh, do you have other special interests then in neurosurgery? Are there, uh, what, what, I, I know at uh, Ventura County Medical Center, we have Dr. Evan Slater, uh, and we've really been providing adult oncology care to an extraordinary. Uh, right. level for uh, Ventura County and uh, in the face of the financial crisis and even uh, our, our patients with private insurance flock to him as well and I know that's that has to be good for your business. It is. I, you know I think that in, um, in a community like Neuro, uh, Ventura County um, probably as a neurosurgeon, we also work on the spine. We do um, both cervical and lumbar and thoracic spine uh, surgeries when needed. Um, and so spine um, uh, disorders and problems make up probably about 70% of what we see on kind of in the office or patients that come in with problems. But um, Oncology tumors, uh, intracranial tumors are definitely part of the, uh, what we see all the time. And, um, and it is nice, you know, in the county system, we realize that uh, in my clinic or if I'm covering for the uh, hospital, I know that I can, you know, see just about anybody at any time with all different types of pathology. Um, one of the things in talking about um, brain tumors that uh, has come along yeah, along with the PACS um, is uh, the use of what's called um, frameless imaging or stereotactic guided uh, with uh, what's called frameless. And do you want me to? Yes, please. Okay. I, I, I trained in uh, psychobiology and I, I know we used to put our little rat heads in and go drill in and try and wipe out their appetite centers and try and be as precise as possible. Yeah, uh, I imagine it's a little better now. Yeah, it, well, it's, it's changed and it, yeah, the technology's gotten a lot better. I think um, as a neurosurgeon, um, what we're always trying to do is improve our ability to get to where we're going or um, resect out what we want to resect out with the least amount of injury to the surrounding brain. Um, and in doing that, um, we have kind of um, evolved this, what is called stereotactic surgery. And it used to be that um, to do this, we would have to put a patient in a large head frame and take them and get imaging studies, and then that would help us focus in on where we should be operating. What has evolved is um, over the last, uh, I would say, four to five years, um, this frameless imaging uh, is what it's called, um, has helped us in the operating room. And essentially what it does is um, 
to go through a case, uh, if you had a patient come in, was diagnosed with a brain mass of some sort, um, we would get a image which would essentially map the patient's brain. It, it um, provides us a map for the brain. Um, then, then when the patient comes to the operating room, we take that information, which is um, essentially computer generated. Um, while in the operating room, uh, this information is fed into a computer that we have in the operating room. The um, computer itself has, it's very much set up like a, a GPS system that you would have in your car. And if, if it makes sense, um, I, just simply looking at it, what happens is, is that there are um, uh, receptors or uh, leads that read um, the instrument that we hold in our hand. So when I'm holding this instrument in my hand, the uh, receptors that are on the computer machine itself will act like a satellite up in the sky. So the, the instrument I'm holding in my hand is like a car. The um, receptors that are reading the instrument in my hand is like a satellite in the sky uh, for a GPS system. And the head would be like the world. So it's a little bit different in that, you know, instead of a little car in a big world, you have a little world with a big car. But um, when the patient is put to sleep, undergoes an anesthetic, what happens is, is that um, we then um, know the location of the head based on where this frame has been set up. And so throughout the surgery, what I'm able to do is use this instrument and plot where I'm going. Um, and it's very nice. Uh, from a standpoint, um, I can take a probe, put it on the surface of the brain, and I can look on a screen with the computer and know that this is where I am in this patient's brain. And so, and then I can also say that's where the tumor is and that's where I want to go or whatever I'm going after. Um, and that technology has really brought down um, the uh, accuracy or improved, I should say, the yes. accuracy of what we're doing. Um, in the past, you know, a lot of uh, our localization was all done on surface, kind of measuring mm -hmm. by hand on the surface of the scalp or the the skull now this is uh, in most cases within five millimeters of accuracy so that's a big improvement so bones comes in with this tricorder and uh, sounds like pretty we're right. pretty far out in the future here right. and it's it's right here at Ventura County Medical Center it is and in terms of spinal surgery, uh, you have an interest in the spine as well? We do um, and I think um, this from the standpoint of doing spine surgery, we really have a pretty comprehensive practice. Um, being at the Ventura County Center, it is a major referral center for trauma. And, um, and in some ways that makes it interesting for us because we really get a lot of complex cases and we get to use all our skills in that regard. Um, so from a standpoint of uh, complex cases, we'll have uh, spinal fractures, spinal cord injuries, um, a lot of these cases we have to go in and reconstruct the spine um, uh, to stabilize it, to keep it from moving. And that's um, a lot of what we see in the hospital. Uh, other cases, sometimes we get spinal infections or uh, minor compression fractures, things like that. In the outpatient setting, um, you know, more like the patient that would come in to see me, uh, what I'm going to see there is more uh, patients with just lumbar stenosis, um, herniated discs, things like that. But, um, and those uh, are uh, cases that are, I would say, in a Ventura County are very common um, as far as a neurosurgeon. Um, but we do have the equipment and um, the facilities that treat that, which is nice. And, and what kinds of things would you steer away from a neurosurgeon? I, I guess uh, with time, back surgeries have kind of been studied and come and gone in terms of uh, lower back pain and, and sometimes we steer people more towards uh, physical therapy. Uh, we've injected uh, Adolf's meat tenderizer into spines right. trying to loosen things up. What, what kind of advances have, have been made and what kinds of things have kind of come and gone in, in terms of being in favor as a neurosurgeon? Uh, 